All right, so today what we're doing is I'm gonna recover the RX-7 seats. Hey everybody, today what we're gonna be working on, we're gonna be working on some of the interior pieces. Um, the RX-7, we've been working on the motor for a while, still have a little bit ways to go. So, um, we're gonna focus on the inside for today. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna change out these uh, tan seats that are all tore up. That, and we are gonna replace them with some recovered one. We're gonna go ahead and recover them. Um, I'll put the link in the description or in the video of where I got them and uh, we'll uh, let you guys take a look, see how, see how easy they are to come together. I've used these on the Supra and they were really good fitment and I'll put a picture of how they kind of looked. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. It's a little bit cold today so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull the seats. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay down a blanket in the living room so the wife doesn't get upset and I'm going to actually recover them in there where it's a little bit warmer and so then my hands don't get cold and I can actually do some of the little uh, fine motor skill type stuff that you need to do to recover these. So to get the seat out, in the RX-7 there's just going to be four bolts that hold the, that hold the bracket together. So we'll go ahead and pull those off real quick and get this seat out. We're going to start with the passenger seat because it's been a while since I've done this and um, if I do mess one up, I want it to be the passenger seat or if I do have struggles, I want the nice one, you know, the second one to be in the driver's seat, the one I'm actually using a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the passenger and kind of get the kinks out of it there. So what I'm running into right now is that passenger seat is actually really hard to pull forward, like it's just not moving. So after a little bit, I came over to the driver's seat to see if it would move and it was stuck too. So after a little uh, forceful maneuvering, I got the, at least the driver's side to move forward and the sliders and the brackets kind of look like garbage and uh, rusted up pretty good. And So I'm going to keep attacking the passenger seat, but I think I can get the driver's seat out at this point. I got it loosened up enough I can kind of move it around, so we'll just uh, see where we can get with the passenger seat and then we'll pull the driver's seat out anyway. Alright, so the update is those were super rusted, but I was able to get them out both sides of the back. So, I'm going to try to get the front ones off and we're just going to maybe do the driver's seat. I still haven't made any headway with the passenger, so we'll just, uh, we'll see where we get. Um, we'll probably pull the driver's seat first. Um, it does have the most damage, so we'll compromise and do that one first. That'll be the test run, I guess. Hopefully we don't screw it up. And then in the meantime, I'll work on the passenger seat when we finish with the drivers. So after a little bit of trying, we got the seat out. Um, let's see, there, when I went to pull the seat bracket though, it was weird because if you look, my hands are dry. But I went to pull this bracket, and you can see it's kind of wet. Got some stuff on it, so I don't know why it's wet, but it would probably explain the rust. But hopefully, it was just a little bit of water. I kind of pulled the seat back a little bit. I can't really see there, but it doesn't look like it rusted through in a lot of spots. So I wonder if it was just the little bracket pieces where it connects. Because if you look, there's little signs of rust in all of them. But they did pull out of the threads and didn't, so I don't know how bad it is. We'll pull the carpet later and look. But you gotta love the things you find under a seat. You got a paintbrush, looks like somebody's uh, insurance, and 50 cents. So, looks like I'm making money on this. So, after a uh, a little bit of angry moments through a trying time. I uh, got the passenger seat out, and it looks like there's more uh, goodies underneath. A little candy bar, and I'm not sure what this is. Looks like a receipt. So 
not a, not making any money on this side, but I mean the things do look clean. The the bolt holes, and I did actually figure out why this one was uh, so hard to get out. I'll show you. Come over here. Here's the passenger seat, and uh, get the lights so you can see. What happened was when this when you actuate this, um, this slider moves like it should, but there's a wire over here. This wire right here should connect to there to actually release this, because when you bend this down, this slider moves freely, pretty easily. But it was stuck because that wire wasn't there holding it, or actuating it, so. Nothing really wrong with it, just that one broken piece. I mean, that's easy enough. You can just re grab the wire and just tighten that back over and it'll be just fine again. But no rust or broken parts, so. That's a good deal. So now, got both of them out. Now it's time to start recovering them. So for the tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need some pliers, maybe some dikes if you wanna, if you need them. Those are gonna be to get the metal rings on and off. You're gonna need a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips to get the lever, the seat lever and the panel off, and a flathead to maybe get the little plastic plugs off. Um, and you also need you know, a socket, and you'll also, I, I used a drill, because um, where the where the old seats had like pre-made cuts in them where you could attach the rings, um, the new ones didn't, so I had to drill them. Um, I mean, you can use whatever, you punch it out if you want, however you do. A drill worked just fine for me. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start by taking these screws out, right? Right there, and right there, in the bottom corner. And take this cover off, probably take off the arm, and kind of, the idea is I'm gonna separate the base from the back. Those come off in two separate pieces, and I'll kind of recover them separately. It sound white. So I'm gonna take these bolts off right there. And did both bottom brackets, so now we're in two pieces. Looking at it, I might actually be able to kind of just throw the upholstery around those brackets and not actually have to even deal with uh, taking those brackets off because I'm not sure how to, you'd even do that. I don't see a good spot to unbolt this top half without causing a lot of issues. So if I don't, oops. Yeah, it could be a, hard to pull that off. In the, Looks like you can probably just get a flathead and actually take that off. But if I don't have to, I'm not going to, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to bypass it and we'll see what happens. Next thing is we're gonna take off the seatbelt bracket. And then from there, there's all these little hooks right here. Um, and we're just gonna take them off one by one, start from the outside. And as you get in, there'll be more of them at all the little tight points. Like right here, up this, across your seams, things like that, there's gonna be those little brackets. And we're basically gonna just take this thing off from the outside in. So now that we've got all the buckles off, those pulled out, we're gonna take this slider off by undoing the bolts there and on the other side. We'll slide them up and down and pull that off. It sound right, boy. We can take the brackets off. There's actually two more of those little uh, black plugs like that, right there, and on the opposite end. So once those are off, you can take start to pull the cover off. And as you do that, you'll run into. Each of these seams will have little metal plates. Inside there, they'll have more little those tiny metal hooks. Instead, just like I said, we're gonna work through there, probably there, there, and down both of these lines, and we will get all of them out. By then, it'll pull the cover off. It's 
sound right, boy. Okay, now I got the cover completely off. These are all the little seam parts that tie into it. And then if you look in here, all these have there's a little middle line that goes all the way inside of there and hits in all three of these spots, all these spots across. And that's where they'll tie in. So there is what your seat you've been sitting on for 30 years looks like. Pretty gross. So we're gonna throw another cover on it. Before we start the cover, I'm gonna actually like take off the top part now. So what we're gonna do is there's some hooks down here. And we're gonna start and get those and just kinda just like the other one, we're gonna start from the outside and work work in. Sound right, boy. So, these are what the seats look like when they're all taken apart. We have a whole bunch of rings over there, I'm going to try to reuse. And these are what we're gonna replace the seats with. Got these black leather ones. Got them custom made down. A place one called, I think it's called Innovative Interiors. You can get the color, you can get the stitching, and you can have them embroider like the Fini logo in. I think for the RX7, I think that was the other thing you can embroider in. You might be able to do custom jobs, I'm not really sure. but. I had them do that, and then they were relatively cheap, so I went ahead and installed them. So a big difference between the interior innovations one and the OEM ones are, if you look right here, these have like a hard plastic on them that you can wrap those rings around, and they have kind of pre-punched holes. On these other ones, it's really like a, it's a little bit thinner plastic, I think. Um, I thought it was just a little, uh, like a double layer kind of stitched on there, but it does look like it is actually a plastic, but there's no hole, so you just kind of are going to punch them in, punch those uh, rings through wherever you need. Um, I'm just going to basically put them right in the exact same place as the old ones were, and we'll keep going. Great, on that beat, going crazy. finished um, it'll take a minute there's little wrinkles in it but as you sit in it they settle out um, so now time to start on the base all right so I got the cover on so now I'm just putting the brackets um, if you look got all the little hooks along the 
get those set. So now I'm putting the sliders back on. I'm gonna bolt them back up. So this is what it looks like when it's all done in all its glory. So a few hours later, we got both seats done and that's what they're gonna look like. Um, the only next last step is we still have those the side panels with the, uh, the levers, the seat levers. So what we need to do is just uh, clean them up a little bit and spray paint them, get them to match. These are done and they look pretty much like they would OEM. I'm pretty happy with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the seats. So when putting this on, you're gonna wanna make sure that this little hook part right here actually hooks to right up here. And then you're just gonna line up the screw holes with the screw holes and there's actually a screw hole right under here. So you're gonna have to kind of punch through that one more time. but. Once you bolt those in, and you bolt the handle in, then it's all good. You're all done. Bolt it on, and it's done. Once you do all that, you have two completed seats. Um, where they look right now, they haven't been sat in or anything done, so they look a little, uh, they look a little loose and goofy. But once you sit in them, the wrinkles will go out of them, and um, it'll kind of form into place. So that is how you reupholster FD seats. We'll see you next time.